What exactly is happening beneath the fractured crown of Mount St. Helens? Is the lava dome buried within its yawning crater once again awakening, its hidden furnace stoking new fire? When we hear claims that thermal energy is rising fast or that the dome is morphing into a monster, how much of that is rooted in science and how much in myth-making? A lava dome is not a static pile of rock, but a living system born of magma, heat, gas and pressure. Its evolution is a subtle dance between cooling and crystallization, between degassing and collapse, between hidden magmatic intrusion and surface deformation. To truly understand what is happening at Mount St. Helens now, one must interrogate not the headline, but the physics and geology of dome processes. The new lava dome that occupies the center of the crater today emerged during the eruption that began in autumn of 2004 and concluded in early 2008. At the height of that episode, molten dacite rose from several kilometers below at extrusion rates reaching between 7 and 10 cubic meters per second, about 200 to 350 cubic feet per second. This was not an explosive fountain, but a steady extrusion, a toothpaste-like oozing of highly viscous lava that heaped itself into jagged lobes and a rising spine, sometimes called the whaleback, for its smooth, arched form. If that vigorous pace had continued, geologists calculated the volcano's crater would have been completely refilled and the pre-1980 summit elevation restored in just over a decade. Instead, as magma supply dwindled, growth slowed, and by 2008 it ceased. What was left was a steep-sided blocky dome over 400 metres high, more than 1,300 feet perched amid the glacier that partly encircled it. When dome extrusion halts, its story is far from over. Internally, the dome remains a body of partially molten dacite, its outer rind solidifying quickly while its core cools slowly over years and decades. This sets up strong temperature gradients, generating contraction cracks, fumarole networks and hydrothermal systems. Heat bleeds away by conduction through solid rock, by convection through steam vents, and by radiation from hot surfaces. At Mount St. Helens, heat escaping from the dome's flanks carved melt channels through the surrounding glacier, creating spectacular ice caves hundreds of meters long. Inside these caves, researchers documented roaring steam vents, dripping icicles, and walls alternating between glacial ice and talus of still warm volcanic blocks. The caves themselves became barometers of the dome's thermal state. The newly published 2025 paper in the Journal of Volcanology and Geothermal Research brings the most comprehensive assessment yet of how that dome has changed in the years since extrusion ended. Drawing on field surveys conducted between 2014 and 2023, satellite thermal imaging, drone photogrammetry and airborne LIDAR, the study provides multiple lines of evidence. All of them converge on one conclusion, the dome is steadily cooling, subsiding, and losing thermal energy. Temperature measurements tell the clearest story. Between the years 2014 and 2016, fumaroles at the summit were still reaching around 380 degrees Celsius, roughly 716 degrees Fahrenheit. By the year 2021, peak vent temperatures had declined to near 90 degrees Celsius, about 194 degrees Fahrenheit. By the year 2024, many active vents were only 60 degrees Celsius, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, barely above the boiling point of water at crater elevation. On the crater walls and within the glacier caves, steam vents cooled nearly to freezing, leaving only weak wisps where once there had been roaring jets. This progression marks the transition from a dome dominated by residual magmatic heat to one dominated by ordinary near-surface geothermal circulation. The caves themselves delivered another dramatic indicator. Mothra Cave, once stretching almost 800 metres in length, more than 2,600 feet, shrunk to under 200 metres in a single year as ice refroze and passages collapsed. The cave roofs had been supported by warm, convecting air and persistent steam flux. Once heat waned, the structures became unstable and fell. Survey teams noted similar contraction in Snoopy Cave and other glacier conduits. By late 2023, many of the best-known caves had disappeared entirely beneath refrozen ice and collapsed debris.
LiDAR topographic surveys compared between 2009 and 2019 show that the dome surface itself subsided by over 35 metres, about 114 feet. This broad collapse and lowering was concentrated in the 2004 to 2008 dome, whereas the older 1980 to 1986 dome nearby remained essentially unchanged in height. The implication is that the younger dome, composed of loosely stacked lobes and a spine, was structurally weaker and thermally hotter, hence more prone to subsidence as cooling and contraction progressed. These processes are not unique to Mount St. Helens. Lava domes worldwide undergo similar life cycles. At Montserrat Soufria Hills Volcano, continuous dome extrusion from 1995 to 2010 built a massive block more than one cubic kilometre in volume. Once extrusion ended, fumarolic activity declined and geophysical monitoring indicated progressive cooling. Between the years 2014 and 2016, researchers concluded the dome had solidified enough that plastic flow of magma within it was no longer likely. At Japan's Unzen volcano, a dome grown in the early 1990s produced catastrophic pyroclastic flows, but once growth ceased, the dome cooled and stabilized within two decades. At Indonesia's Merapi, repeated dome growths culminate in dome collapse eruptions, but the interim domes that survive likewise show cooling, steaming decline, and eventual erosion. Russia's Shivaluk, one of the most active dome-building volcanoes on Earth, offers another contrast. It grows new domes frequently, but the older lobes in its crater clearly show deep weathering and cooling. Mount St. Helens' current dome is following the same pattern. To appreciate the mechanics of this process, one must consider magma rheology. The site at Mount St. Helens contains about 64 to 66 percent silica by weight, giving it a viscosity millions of times higher than basalt. At eruption temperature, around 800 to 900 degrees Celsius, this magma begins to crystallize rapidly, forming plagioclase, pyroxene, and amphiboly crystals. As crystallinity rises above 50 percent, the magma ceases to flow as a liquid and instead behaves like a solid plug. Gas bubbles trapped within attempt to escape, producing fumarolic venting. But as cooling progresses further, pathways seal and only diffuse degassing persists. The result is exactly what is observed today, weak low-temperature fumaroles and contracting dome geometry. Heat transfer in such a body can be estimated by basic conductive cooling models. For a dome several hundred meters in radius, thermal diffusion over decades will progressively solidify its interior. Convection through fumaroles accelerates cooling by advecting heat upward, but as gas flux diminishes, conduction dominates. Satellite-based ASTA and Landsat data show surface radiant flux declining year by year, consistent with diminishing convective contribution. In essence, the dome is gradually freezing from outside in like a slowly cooling loaf of bread. Yet this gradual decline does not mean zero hazard. Even dormant domes can produce dangerous collapses. As joints and fractures propagate during cooling, large blocks can detach from steep faces, producing rockfalls. If water infiltrates and flashes to steam, small phreatic explosions can occur. The collapse of an oversteepened lobe could still generate a localized pyroclastic flow, albeit not on the scale of 1980. Furthermore, interaction with the crater glacier adds complexity. Sudden collapses can unleash meltwater floods or lahars. But crucially, none of these processes indicate renewed magmatic energy, only the mechanical adjustment of a cooling edifice. The key question remains. Is there any sign that fresh magma is intruding beneath the dome today? The answer from seismicity, deformation and gas flux is no. Earthquake swarms beneath Mount St. Helens have been slightly above long-term background in recent years, but their depths and magnitudes are consistent with brittle fracture and hydrothermal processes, not fresh pressurized magma. Continuous GPS stations on the edifice detect no inflation, Gas sensors record low sulfur dioxide emissions, again consistent with a cooling dome rather than a feeding magma reservoir. Another layer of understanding comes from petrology. The dome's day site carries within it a record of its cooling path. Thin sections reveal ground mass of interlocking plagioclase laths, pyroxene and hornblende crystals, plus volcanic glass quenched during extrusion. 
Over time, devitrification converts glass into crystalline phases, strengthening the dome but also sealing pore space. That sealing alters permeability. In the early years, gases escape easily, sustaining vigorous fumaroles. With progressive crystallization, the dome becomes effectively impermeable. Gas pathways choke and surface degassing diminishes. This is exactly the evolutionary track documented between the years 2014 and 2024. Volatile chemistry reinforces the same point. Fresh magmatic gas typically carries high sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide fluxes. At Mount St. Helens, measurements in the immediate post-extrusion years showed detectable sulfur output, but by the decade of the 2010s, values dropped below instrumental detection. The gases escaping now are largely water vapour with traces of carbon dioxide, signatures of hydrothermal circulation rather than magma ascent. The dwindling gas budget dovetails with the thermal decline observed by infrared satellites. Energy balance calculations highlight the scale of heat lost. A dome of tens of millions of cubic metres, initially at 8 to 900 degrees Celsius, holds on the order of 10 to the power of 16 joules of thermal energy. Dissipation of that reservoir occurs over decades. Early in the cooling history, convective gas flux can remove hundreds of megawatts. Later, as convection wanes, conductive loss drops that figure to a few tens of megawatts. Satellite data from ASTA confirm the transition. Radiant flux estimates fell steadily from the high hundreds of megawatts in the decade of the 2000 aughts to mere tens of megawatts by the early years of the decade of the 2020s. In practical terms, the dome is radiating less heat now than a small power plant. The physical deformation of the dome is equally telling. Thermal contraction drives inward sagging, while gravity destabilizes steep lobes. The 35-meter loss of elevation documented by LIDAR is not a sign of inflation, but the opposite, subsidence. Drone surveys captured block collapses on the dome's north and east faces, with talus accumulating at the base. These collapses resemble small-scale avalanches, initiated not by new intrusion, but by the slow settling of a cooling pile. Such processes are self-limiting. As steep angles relax, collapse frequency diminishes. Comparisons with other domes enrich the picture. At Shivaluk in Kamchatka, new domes frequently overlap older ones. Radiant flux imagery shows a mosaic, intensely hot, growing lobes adjacent to cold, eroded relics. The juxtaposition makes clear how domes evolve from incandescent youth to frozen senescence. Soufriere Hills exhibit similar duality. Its newer lobes, active into the decade of the 2010s, emitted high heat flux, while older lobe surfaces cooled to background. Unzen's dome, now over 30 years old, still emits occasional fumaroles, but at negligible flux. Merapi's domes follow a cycle, growth, collapse, burial, cooling. In every case, the trajectory is the same. Without new magma, domes inexorably cool. Mount St. Helens is firmly in that cooling phase. Monitoring technologies sharpen our certainty. Thermal cameras mounted on aircraft or satellites detect temperature anomalies down to a few degrees Celsius. Interferometric synthetic aperture radar measures surface deformation at centimeter scales. Continuous GPS tracks vertical and horizontal displacements with millimeter precision. Gas sensors measure trace emissions. Seismometers distinguish brittle fractures from deep magmatic tremor. Together, these instruments create a multidimensional surveillance net. Across all channels, Mount St. Helens signals quiescence. Declining heat, no uplift, weak seismicity, minimal gas. The investigative verdict is consistent and unanimous. What then of the headline claim that thermal energy is rising fast and the dome is morphing into a monster? The very opposite is true. Energy is falling, fumaroles are fading, caves are collapsing shut, elevation is subsiding. The monster metaphor captures imagination, but it misleads the public. The dome is not rearing up to threaten, it is shrinking into stability. The true drama is not in an imminent eruption, but in the quiet physics of how hot rock cools, cracks, and subsides. It is a natural laboratory in slow motion. Still, the investigative story should not end with reassurance alone. The dome's decline offers insight into the volcano's future. Cooling domes act like corks, plugging conduits. While today's dome is solidifying, magma still exists kilometres below. Eventually,
decades or centuries hence, pressure will build again and either force new magma through fractures in the dome or blow it aside in a new eruption. Historical records remind us that Mount St. Helens has cycled through domes repeatedly, between the years 1980 and 1986, again between the years 2004 and 2008, each episode leaving behind a solid plug. The present cooling does not mean extinction, only interlude. In the end, what the new research illuminates is the precision with which geoscientists can now track such interludes. Where once domes were black boxes, today they are dissected by infrared satellites, drones, seismometers and gas analyzers. Every declining degree, every collapsing cave, every subsiding meter is logged. The real investigative revelation is not a monster rising, but a technology-enabled clarity that strips away myth. The dome's life story is written in measurable processes, magma crystallization, volatile loss, heat diffusion, gravitational sag. So is Mount St. Helens' lava dome morphing into a monster? The evidence is resounding. No, it is metamorphosing into stone, cooling into permanence, and teaching us about the life cycle of silesic domes worldwide. Headlines may dramatize, but the rocks tell their own quieter truth. The monster is not in the mountain, it is in misunderstanding. If you found this investigation into the geological reality of Mount St. Helens compelling, help us share accurate science more widely. Like, share and subscribe, and do not forget to tap that hype icon to help this video pushed into wider audience. Your support helps this work reach more curious minds and keeps critical volcanic research in the spotlight.